guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new, welcome. My name is Dina. Before I get into everything, I just wanted to quickly say I had this like realization this morning and I'm like, at what point did I stop talking to a camera or myself and did I start talking to you guys? Obviously, I've always been talking to you guys, but you know, when you first start off, there's a little bit of like an awkwardness almost. Like you're literally talking to a camera in your room. There's no one else here. Like no one else is with me. I'm talking to myself essentially, but it stopped feeling like that. And I think it's when, you know, when you guys started to interact and comment, I started to talk with you guys. But it's just really cool because I was just thinking about how much excitement I had filming yesterday. But it's really cool when YouTube becomes that, I don't know, it just feels like an actual interaction instead of just me talking to myself or talking to a camera lens. I don't know, I just felt like I wanted to mention that and just also thank you guys for you know being part of this journey because it's just really, really cool. Anyways, I'm not gonna ramble any longer. I wanna talk about lucid dreaming. So if you guys saw my previous lucid dreaming video basically I shared my experience because I had a really really cool night of lucid dreams but I also had a really interesting astral projection like experience I think it was astral projection it was the weirdest experience I ever had in my life and I don't know how else to explain it if you guys haven't seen that video and you're curious don't worry I'll link it below for you guys and at the end of this video also I wanted to talk about my you know my progress since then as well as you know share some tips and some interesting things that I've learned because along this journey I've actually been reading this book the field guide to lucid dreaming it's a very interesting book and it has actually really helped me and it's really intriguing how this has helped me and I'll share my personal experiences at the end of this video I decided to break it up into two parts so the first part I'm gonna share with you you know what I've learned from this book and I'm not gonna like get into deep details about everything that's in this book because this video would just be way too long so if you guys are interested just you know just get the book yourself I'll link it below for you guys but I will get into the main things that have I guess helped me in lucid dreaming and you know really developing this skill and it's still a journey for me but I want to get into that and then the part two of this video will be me sharing some of my dreams experiences I don't know how much detail I'll get into I may not share all of the dreams because I dream a lot but I've got my dream journal here so I will share a little bit with you guys so the first you know technique that they teach you in this book for you know developing this lucid dreaming skill are reality checks now reality checks are something that you want to incorporate into your everyday life because eventually it's gonna become habit and you're gonna start to do these reality checks or know to do these reality checks in your dreams and this is one way you're gonna become lucid now I have done these in my dreams too which is really cool and I'll get into that but sometimes people just spontaneously become lucid in the dream that happens a lot for me too but the whole point of doing these reality checks is to train your brain so becoming lucid in your dream is not necessarily an accident or a mistake or just fluke but instead something that you have trained your mind to do now they have different types of reality checks that they talk about in this book so one is the finger trick basically you put your finger up to your hand if your finger goes through your hand you're most likely dreaming <laughs> don't do too hard um, but if you're obviously walking around in your everyday life and you're like am I dreaming no I'm not dreaming that's another thing you want to do is obviously say am I dreaming am I dreaming look around am I dreaming this is something you want to like get in the habit of doing in your everyday life like doesn't matter what you're doing if you're going for a walk or if you're just working at your house or whatever it might be ask yourself am I dreaming because the more you train your mind to do that the more you're gonna do it you know unconsciously so yeah so there's that there's a finger trick there's the hand trick so look at your hand does your hand look normal? Do your fingers look normal? Do you have five fingers? Are they morphing together? Is your hand changing before your eyes? Things like that happen in dreams. Um, I don't know if you've ever looked at your hand in a dream, but often it doesn't look quite right. They also have the jumping technique. So jump, how does gravity respond? Do you fall back down quickly? Because oftentimes if you jump in a dream, gravity doesn't behave the same way. Maybe you'll float, maybe you'll just kind of like, maybe it's a very slow motion jump or something like that. So that's another technique they use. They also talk about the nose technique. So like pinch your nose, 
can you still breathe through your nose? If obviously you're, if you're awake, you can't, but if you're dreaming, chances are you probably can. It's kind of like the same thing as like swimming underwater. I've had dreams where I'm swimming underwater and I can breathe underwater. So obviously it's a dream. Um, and then they also have the mirror. Now this is something that I've personally used in my dream and it's really, really cool. And some people get scared about looking in mirrors and dreams and sometimes it's creepy and sometimes it's weird. But you know, oftentimes your reflection is very warped and like, it's like not quite you, but it's a version of you and it's really bizarre. So start to look in the mirror. And they also have the reading trick. So oftentimes if you try to read a sentence or a few sentences in a dream, whether it's on a piece of paper or whatever it might be, things tend to morph. The sentence that you try to read, oftentimes it's not the same sentence by the time you read over it the third time or something like that. Things don't Things don't have the same level of consistency in a dream as they do in real life. So start to practice this in your everyday life. Whenever you're reading something, notice how the words on your piece of paper, they're not changing and ask yourself, am I dreaming? No, everything, everything's clear there. Everything's staying put, so I must not be dreaming. So these are just some of the techniques that they recommend for the reality checks. So this book also gets into stabilizing techniques, which are really helpful. So once you've become lucid, you don't want to lose that lucidity because sometimes lucidity like is one of those things that you kind of drift in and out of. So there are some techniques that they share that are really interesting. So one of them is to tame your excitement. For me personally, this is what I have noticed causes me to wake up prematurely. So if I'm really excited about achieving lucidity or getting a milestone, like reaching a milestone in my lucid experience, I get really excited and that's usually what wakes me up and I'm like, shoot, like I was having an awesome dream and now I'm awake and it's really frustrating. But you want to tame your excitement. This is something I'm still working on, but I have tried the deep breathing in my dreams and it has helped to prolong the dream a little bit longer. And then they also talk Talk about spinning, which was really interesting. Apparently spinning kind of tricks your brain a little bit, so it kind of makes it harder for your body to wake up. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that, but that was another technique that they mentioned. So you also mentioned staying engaged. So once you achieve that lucidity, don't lose yourself in the dream. You might wanna, you know, explore, talk to the people in the dream, like have fun in the dream. But at the same time, you want to achieve, they talk about achieving a balance. So a, a balance between, you know, exploring the dream, having fun in the dream, but also becoming centered again and reminding yourself, I am dreaming. Otherwise, you'll probably lose your lucidity. You'll probably dream hop, which dream hopping isn't necessarily a real term, I don't think, but it's what I used to describe like from going from one dream to another because dreams tend to morph into each other and just kind of switch back and forth really quickly. So I call it dream hopping, but I've actually have some, I've had nights where I've dream hopped and stayed lucid, which was like one of the biggest turning points for me. So it's really cool. It is possible, but it's something that you kind of have to like work at in a way. Anyways, they also talk about touching something. <laughs> for some reason, you know, interacting with the objects in your surroundings helps to stabilize the dream. I also talk about commanding the dream. Now this is a technique that I use and I will share with my experience is think of a word that helps to stabilize the dream. You could just say stabilize. This is one of the techniques that they suggest. For example, let's say that you're lucid in your dream and things start to get fuzzy, blurry. They're not as crystal clear as they were. You feel like you're either phasing out of this dream and into a new dream or you feel like you're about to wake up because oftentimes things get blurry, less clear for me when I'm about to wake up. Commanding the dream is a way to kind of like bring stabilization to the dream again. If you say, for example, stabilize, oftentimes the dream will become clear again and you can, you know, continue on a little bit longer because dreams are kind of fleeting. A lot of times they don't last as long as we wish them to last, but I find this kind of prolongs the dream. They also say meditate. So you could actually train yourself to actually meditate in your dream. Even maybe sit down like you would meditate in real life and meditate in the dream, which is really cool. I haven't tried that one yet. I haven't gotten there yet, but I have tried deep breathing. So, and, and the deep breathing did help to stabilize the dream. So it's really, really interesting. And then they move into ways to play around with your dream. So this book is really cool at teaching different things that you can play around with and experiment with once you've developed that lucid, you know, technique, that lucid skill, because obviously you got to develop that before you move on to this step, but they talk about different ways of transportation. So you may try flying. Flying is usually the most popular, I think, 
that people try. I try flying when I'm lucid all the time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it works kind of well. It's more of like a leap that just prolongs, but it's something that you kind of have to work on because it's also programmed into your mind that this isn't like, this doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like we, we can't fly in real life and it's so deeply programmed into my brain. I can't fly that when it comes to even a dream world where you know you're dreaming, you're like, I should be able to do whatever I want. It is still so deeply programmed into your brain that you can't do that. So you really have to almost retrain your brain to be able to do all these different things that are available to you in the dream world that aren't available to to you in real life. So they also talk about trying to shape shift. Another thing I wanna mention in this book that I really like is they share a lot of personal experiences. So people will share their like really interesting dream experiences and they'll put those throughout the book and throughout the chapters. So I really like that. I thought that was really cool. I love listening to other people's dreams. I love sharing my dreams, but I also just love listening to other people's dream experiences. Also, they talk about trying to use a magic carpet, trying to walk through walls. I've actually tried the walk through wall thing before it was really really fun. They talk about time travel, basically all the ways you can try to move about in your dreams. One of the chapters I found so interesting about this book was the chapter about what they call the natives. Now basically the natives are the people of the dream, native to the land of dreaming I guess you could say, and the theories behind that, the theories about whether like are these people in our dreams just like manifestations of different parts of us or different parts of our subconscious. Um, especially like obviously there's versions of people in our lives that show up in our dreams, but sometimes our brain just creates these people and we like, we don't know who they are, but they're crystal clear faces. And I don't know about you guys, some people don't have vivid dreams, but I personally have very vivid dreams where I could be in a crowd of like 50 plus people and every one of them will have crystal clear features. Their face, their hair color, their clothing that they're wearing, their accessories, like the, their expressions, like everything will be crystal clear. And I'll wake up, I'm like, who are these people? Like, is my brain just making up these people? So they talk about the theories on that. And, and yes, it may feel far-fetched but they talk about the possibility that maybe some of these people are you know actual like other beings from like I don't know a different dimension like maybe one of them's a spirit guide maybe some of these people are actual people in real life living their own dream and experiencing their own dream and maybe dream sharing is a thing like it's it's wild and obviously these are all just theories and they're just fun to think about but they do talk about something that I found really fascinating and I do want to share with you guys because I thought this was just like like so cool okay so this is a story that basically supports the idea that there might be characters in our dream or people in our dreams that are actually independent beings. So again, I know this is far-fetched and may seem crazy, but listen to this story, it is so wild. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with Carl Jung. If you have taken any sort of psychology course whatsoever, then you probably know who Carl Jung is. Okay, so Carl Jung ran into the bigger question when he met a wise dream character named Philemon who returned to him again and again throughout many dreams. The psychotherapist wrote about his experience, Philemon and other figures in my fantasies brought home to me the crucial insight that there are things in the psyche which I do not produce, but which produce themselves and have their own life. Philemon represented a force that was not myself. In my fantasies, I held conversations with him and he said things which I had not consciously thought. So it gets weirder. If this story seems a little bit nuts, here's the real puzzler. Many years after Young dreamed of this figure named Philemon, author Robert Moss dreamed repeatedly of a man who also called himself Philemon. Moss swears that he had never read Young's writings at the time and was not aware that he shared the same guide with the deceased Young. It was only years later that he made the discovery and imagine his surprise. So this character named Philemon showed up in two different men's dreams and the one like he didn't even know that this happened to Carl Jung, which is I just think is so interesting. Like maybe there is like some sort of being or guide or spirit that is literally visiting different people in their dream. Like it's possible. It's interesting to think about. So I just wanted to mention that with you guys, but it, it, this book is honestly 
so fascinating and I found it so fun to read and I did like I did read it front to back but I know I'm gonna like go back just to reference the different things and if I need to brush up on certain skills and ideas but I highly recommend this book guys like if you guys are really interested in lucid dreaming honestly it's the book for it but let's talk about my own experiences now so I got my dream journal here I'm gonna pick out some things to tell you guys. One of the things I wanna mention that I've been experiencing since I've been developing my lucidity skill is that I've started to, one, grow a very heightened awareness of my own uh, life, like real life, and my progress with lucidity while I'm dreaming. So I'm starting to, one, remember while I am lucid dreaming, other lucid dreams I've had and other experiences and growing upon that which is fascinating but I've also started to remember things I've learned in this book while I am lucid dreaming and practicing those techniques in my dreams so this is really cool so the more you start to explore this and the more conscious you are of it the more your brain is trained to really think and contemplate these things while you're dreaming. So one I want to mention, I have I have like names for all my dreams and stuff I write down. So I want to mention this scary lucidity dream. Again, I'm not going to read the entire dreams because my dreams are so detailed and some of them are like six pages long. So at some point in this dream, I became lucid and I looked around and I'm like, oh, I'm dreaming. This isn't real life. And I was at a table with a group of people they all simultaneously like just looked at me with like these wide creepy horror movie eyes and said what's real life and it was the scariest experience ever it almost felt like the people in my dream were actual beings or something from like another realm I just got this sinking feeling in my stomach that they wanted to awake in my body like they wanted to know what real life was it was really weird seconds after this happened I woke up instantly so that was creepy now I wanted to mention that dream just for the reason that the next lucid dream that I had I think it was just like a few days later I actually remember that dream so I'm not gonna get into the details about the dream and what happened before that because it's not really relevant but when I became lucid I was like looking around and I'm like then I thought to myself I'm lucid I'm dreaming but I'm not gonna say it out loud because I'm scared of what might happen based on what happened the last time I was lucid dreaming and I said it out loud I remembered that dream while I was dreaming. So I thought that was really cool. So on top of that, I had this other dream where I was dream hopping with lucidity. So I had so many different dreams at night, which most of us do, but I remembered most of them. And not only did I remember them, but I became lucid in basically every single one of those. I'm not gonna get into all the details of that. It was a really cool dream. There were so many details I was exploring while also remaining lucid. Again, it's really cool. If you guys want me to post more videos about like in detail what my dreams were about, then let me know. I just don't want this video to drag on too long because I'm looking at my, my time here and I've already been filming for almost 30 minutes. So I'm gonna need to do a lot of editing because this video is gonna be so long. But anyways, what I did wanna mention from this dream hopping experience is that I remembered reading this book and knowing that one of the reality checks, I knew I was dreaming but I just wanted to play with it. I remembered one of the reality checks was to look in the mirror and I came across a mirror in my dream. I'm like, I'm kind of scared to see what I like, see what I look like in the mirror. Like I'm wor I was worried it was gonna be creepy and like horror movie-ish, but like I'm like, okay, I'm gonna look in the mirror. And I looked in the mirror and like, you know, what normally happens in a dream, it was me, but it wasn't me. You know, it was like a version of me, some warped version of me. I looked in the mirror and I was a strange rocker looking version of myself with a blonde teased high ponytail and dark eye makeup. It was really interesting. So I was like, oh, that's weird. And I just like walked away. You know, once you become lucid and you start developing these skills, you get to play with things in your dream more. Okay, so next this other dream I had was a big turning point for me and it was about a dance competition. And basically, there's a few different things that I tried in this dream. One of them, to get to the dance competition, um, I started off first in my room and I was getting changed and I was with a group of girls and they're like, are you ready? And to get to the building, basically we walked through my wall, through a portal to get there. And in, again, in this dream I was lucid and I was, my turn was at the very end of the dream. But long story short, 
our like our routine was until the end of the the dream and i didn't want to wake up i was like the entire dream i was trying not to wake up prematurely because i wanted to dance i really wanted to live out this dream because i miss dance so much so i was trying so hard to stay asleep and at one point the dream i was looking around and i was watching the dancers and i was looking in the crowd and seeing all the people enjoying themselves and things started to get fuzzy like the dream was fading away and i knew i was probably starting to wake up so i actually remembered one of the stabilizing techniques that i had learned in the book and i'm like okay let's try this so i close my eyes in the dream i take a couple deep breaths and i say stabilize stabilize and then everything started going crystal clear again like it was real life and i'm like oh my god it worked and it actually was shortly after that that i woke up and unfortunately i did not get to do my dance i was so excited to be able to dance in the stream and i missed that i was so pissed when i woke up but i think what happened is i was excited by the fact that i made this progress i was excited that i was able to stabilize my dream and that excitement woke me up and that's often what happens is your excitement is what wakes you up so i'm not going to get too much into anything else but i just want to say like this book is is worth it this video is not sponsored or anything I'm just saying from my personal experience if you guys want to you know develop the skill of lucid dreaming whether it is you you know you've had lucid dreams before but not a lot or maybe you've never had a lucid dream most people have had at least one lucid dream in their life but it is a skill you can develop it is and I like I didn't know what to think I, I heard that you could develop it I knew that I've lucid dreamed in the past but I didn't realize how much progress I was gonna make in such a like small time span honestly just from reading this book I do try to practice these like you know reality check techniques and stuff in my daily life I haven't made it as much of a habit as I want to so I am gonna continue to like work on that but honestly just purely from reading about lucid dreaming and talking about lucid dreaming, it has trained my brain to check for these things in my dream to the point where it's happening more. Please give it a try if you guys are interested in this and I want to know your experiences. Like honestly, DM me, comment below. I wanna hear it because I love hearing about other people's dream experiences. I find it's just so, so, so fascinating. So anyways, I was just really excited to share that progress with you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know because I'm sure I'll have more dreams coming. And if you wanna know like more detailed dreams, like I can, we can honestly sit down and hang out and I can read dreams from my dream book because not only have I had really cool lucid dreams, but I have some dreams that are really interesting that make me question. I'm like, am I living like past life memories, experiences? Because some of my dreams, I'm not gonna get into it. That is a whole other topic, but I've got some really fascinating stuff in there. If you guys are interested and want more, please let me know. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have an amazing day. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and you join the family so you don't miss out. And hit that bell notification so you know when I've uploaded a new video. I upload every single week. Anyways, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.